Sunny Bogan 860 HD is a large material handling machine and it weighs in at around 82 tonnes. This model from NZG comes in a large Sunny Bogan branded box and it's in their usual green colour. Listed on the side of the box are a few technical details about the real machine but there's no instructions with this model. Inside the box is the usual pair of expanded polystyrene trays and they're helpfully marked top and bottom so you know whether you need to stand on your head or not. The packaging is factory sealed so you need to make a couple of careful incisions and then you can lift the lid and see what's inside. The box is quite large because the model inside is quite large and it's mostly fully assembled. And there's also plenty of soft paper to protect the model. There are a few other parts in the box. There's a small bag containing some track links and pins. There's a bag of metal handrails. And there are three different work tools, each of which has been nicely wrapped in soft paper. There is one awkward piece of packaging to remove though, and that's this strange cling film that NZG use on the crawler tracks. It's probably there to stop the individual links separating during shipping, but it's certainly a lot messier than the elastic bands that NZG used to use. To put the model in a working configuration, there's some handrails to add. So firstly, there's a platform that just clips in outside the cab. And then there are three separate pieces of metal railing that clip in around the top of the body. These have all been made well because they clip into place nicely and they're not too loose and don't flap about. And it's all just that much nicer when things have a high quality feel attached to them. With all the railings on there's no excuse for any of the Cranes etc team to slip off the top of the body. And we can move on to attach one of the free work tools, in this case the crusher. And it's nice because you can start by just hooking it on and then raising the stick lifts the crusher more or less into place. And then it's secured into place by easily attaching the long securing pin. The metal track pads have got nice cast in detailing. And the base plate's also interesting because there are two NZG model numbers. This one is model 892 and it looks like there'll be a model 893 as well. The track pads are all separate pieces and they're individually hooked together. And the track frame is nicely detailed with some paint highlighting. The Max Cab has got a very nicely detailed interior. And outside there are grab rails, mirrors and protection grills. The body shape is captured well with painted panel handles and rear lights. And on the top at the back there's a video camera modelled. On top there are nice banks of soft cables and hoses running to the cab and the boom. And the extensive hoses run to the top of the boom and right down the stick to the tool. The colour match on the plastic hydraulic ram jackets is very slightly off. But it's good that the connection rivets used are very small and can hardly be seen. The crusher tool is very good, it's metal and it's heavy and it's very nicely decorated. The digging bucket is simpler but surprisingly large. The sorting grab is an all metal part but with solid sides rather than grills. Out into the cranes etc test area and the crawler tracks are too stiff to work on a smooth surface and they are actually quite difficult to roll by hand. The track frames are spring loaded to keep the tension and it's got working rollers both on the bottom and on the top. Let's try out the crawler tracks on the special cranes etc rough terrain surface. And even here there's too much friction in the tracks for them to roll smoothly. However in terms of rotation it's no problem at all. It's quite a big model but it's completely smooth at turning with no rocking at all. One common feature of material handling machines like this is the elevating cab. And that allows the operator to get a better look. It's implemented very well on the model because the cylinders are just stiff enough that you can pose the cab at any height that you want.
Moving on to the movement of the boom in the stick, and the first comment is that the cylinders are nice and stiff, so it will hold any pose that you want to set, and it'll also reach out quite far. The crusher tool is quite heavy, so the model only just about balances at full reach. But bear in mind, if you had a heavy tool at the end of your boom, you'd be tipping over too. In terms of folding up the boom and stick, it does reasonably well, and we'll see a little bit more about that later. But certainly the boom movement is excellent because it can be raised into a truly vertical position. Once you've done that you can then raise up the tool, in this case the crusher, to quite a high position. And if you then want to go for the maximum height you can then raise the stick even further and you get something with a moderately high reach. Looking more closely at the tool the crusher is a nice part and it rotates fully. And you can also open and close the crusher jaws, although they are quite stiff. When you've had enough of crushing the model is nice and flexible because you can change the work tool. And that's quick and easy to do, you just slide out the pin and unhook the tool. And if you think you're a quick change artist you can have no end of fun timing yourself to see how quickly you can change the work tools. This one is the tilting bucket. And it's got a very smooth mechanism but perhaps a little bit too loose because you can't actually pose it in a tilted position. The last of the tools is the sorting grab and that is attached in just the same way as the others. This part rotates on its connection and you can have fun just spinning it around. But it is also nicely engineered because the two sides of the sorting grab are interlocked and open and closed together. One of the things it's nice to do is to display the model as a transport load. And in that regard it's partially successful. Again the boom movement is excellent because it can be lowered right to a horizontal position. But on the other hand the stick just can't quite fold up enough to tuck in under the boom. So that does mean that if you want to display the model as a transport load the boom is just sitting a little bit too high. But these minor details don't stop us at cranes etc so we'll carry on anyway. So we need to take off the handrails and there's one interesting thing with the platform outside the cab. NZG has provided tiny little green parts which plug in where the platform attached to the cab. They just slot into place and they fill up the connection holes for the platform. And it's a nice little touch because it just provides for a neater looking model. The spacing of the crawler tracks is too wide to fit on a low loader properly. But if you're prepared to get the screwdriver out there's something you can do about that. There are four screws which hold the base plate into place on the bottom of the undercarriage. And once they're out you can then ease the base plate off, although it's a tight fitting part so it's a little bit awkward. With the plate off you can then get access to the two screws which secure each track frame in place. Once both of the track frames are removed you can then set about displaying the model in a transport configuration. So all you need for that is a suitable heavy low loader and a couple of support stillages. And then you can put the main part of the 860 onto the vehicle. To make up the load we'll add a crusher and then we'll get another truck and put the two crawler tracks on. In summary this is a very nicely made model from NZG. The detailing is good and most of the features work very well. It's certainly a good looking model and it's one that would pose well in a suitable diorama. So if you like big material handling machines this one is highly recommended. Yeah.